During this referendum campaign, we've heard a lot from the Remain side about the risks of leaving the EU. Brexit, they say, would be a leap in the dark, the cause of a DIY recession and could even lead to war. But now the Leave campaign is trying to turn the tables and focus on the risks of remaining in the EU. Let's take a look at what they've been saying. They argue that remaining in the EU means we will be permanently tied to failing economies in the Eurozone. They say we'll have to hand over more money to the EU in the future as the UK's growth continues to outstrip other member states. And they say that EU treaties mean we are potentially liable for future Eurozone bailouts. Leave campaigners also argue that remaining in will lead to ever higher levels of immigration. They say we'll see even more immigration after countries like Albania and Turkey join the EU. And it's also claimed that high immigration is a particular risk to low-paid workers, as more and more people compete for those jobs. Staying in the EU is also said to threaten our national security because we can't stop dangerous people entering the country. Leave campaigners point the finger at the European Court of Justice, which they say sometimes blocks the UK from deporting criminals and terrorists. And they say that plans for an EU army will undermine both NATO and our own armed forces. Well, Dan Hannan is still with us. Let's start with that issue of national security. What evidence is there that we're going to see an EU army anytime soon? Well, the Commission describes it as a strategic necessity. The, the Commission is not some wacky federalist think tank. They are the people who initiate legislation. Jean-Claude Juncker, almost every time he opens his mouth, says, we need this, we need it urgently. The Spanish government, the German government, they're all pushing it. And, you know, how, how many times have we been through this, Joe, where, yeah, I mean, you, you've been in this game for a bit, where you hear British ministers <laughs> saying, oh, no one's proposing it, it's just mm. chit-chat. It hasn't happened, of course. Well, that's, that's what we were told about the euro, mm. it's what we were told about the social but chapter. They go from being the unthinkable. Army for, all, being inevitable. for a very long time and it hasn't happened. Well, but the people in charge, who I think are worth listening, when people say no one's talking about it, no one except the people actually running the EU, right? I mean, it's clear they want it. I mean, I mean that's the point, isn't it, um, that Dan Hannan is also trying to make. There, there, no, is, there uh, is a uh, will for it to happen in parts of the European Union. You can't dispute that. There is so a what's so sure, what makes look, you so sure it won't there happen? There is a mixture of views, but there's certainly not a consensus for there to be a European army. Absolutely not. And as ever with Dan, he always quotes the European Commission, who in the end, yes, they are bureaucrats, they are civil servants. In the end, the people who make the decision to make the laws in the European Union are MEPs like Dan, and in particular the European Council. They are the ones who have to sign off on over mm. any legislative proposal or anything like this. And I do not see it clear happening. A clear majority of MEPs is in favour oh, well, of the European it, Army. It's and, not going to happen. And a clear majority it's, in the Council. I mean, if there is, not clear, if there is a view. clear majority of M MEPs in the European Parliament, even if there are a number of uh, member states, and David Cameron has said today, we have a rock-solid veto on a European army. You can't categorically sit here and say it will never happen. There is a veto. I mean, this is... We but have how this, many states? Look, how many states what, are needed what you in see, order for what a you vote see on a European army? myth after myth peddled. So, one minute they're telling you uh, there's going to be a European army. We say, but we've got a veto. They go, oh no, it doesn't matter about that. Forget about the veto. There will be a European army. It's just the same with Turkey. They assert Turkey is going to join the European Union. We have a veto on whether Turkey joins the European Union. You well, can't actually function this whole campaign, can you, legitimately on the idea of what might happen, on fears of people about Turkey, for example, the poster that said 80 million Turks are coming mm. to the UK is patently not true as it stands at the moment. So can you do the same in terms of trust over an issue like the European mm. Army? Well, I, I'd say to people, don't listen to what politicians are promising. Rather than going on the basis of hypothesis, look at what's happening now. Look at the past record. How many times have we seen British Prime Ministers saying, I am going to veto this or that, you know? I remember Blair doing it about the well, rebate. I won't Europe. give away the, the... Well, only because the, there was never a majority for it in public opinion here. I mean, the, the, the referendum lock stopped that. I mean, people will remember, actually, I remember discussing it with you on your, on your programme, the time when the Prime Minister, this Prime Minister, said, I'm not going to pay the extra prosperity surcharge, you know, absolutely, I'm furious about this, I'm not going to pay. Of course, he ended up having to pay. Well, let's you know. look, on this issue of the European army, 
I've heard Dan and others, I mean, look, Dan joined the European Parliament when I think I was still at school, and they've all been threatening that there will be a European army because all these horrible Brussels bureaucrats want to create a United States of Europe, a European super state, and it simply has not happened. All right, let's look at some of the other issues and the claims that have been made by your side. I mean, let's have a look at the Eurozone bailouts mm. and whether the UK would be obliged or compelled yeah, to contribute to it. Yeah. Because we know the Prime Minister says absolutely not true that yes. the UK force now the reality check you may or may not agree with the reality check agrees in this case with the remain campaign the UK will not pay for future eurozone bailouts it's been agreed by EU leaders and in addition the UK EU deal from February which will be implemented if the UK votes to stay in the EU right. reinforces this and states well, that again, the UK will be reimbursed if the general EU budget is used for the cost of the okay. eurozone crisis so, that sounds pretty so it clear does, up. doesn't it yeah. so once again go on the basis of what we've actually seen rather than what we're being promised we were given an absolutely cast-iron guarantee that we would not be required to bail out any of the Eurozone countries mm. because we had kept our currency, right? We, at the last general election, the Prime Minister made a big deal out of it. He put it in the manifesto. I've taken us out of the bailout fund. And then in June of last year, the moment it became clear that they needed the money for the third Greek bailout, we were stung with a bill. And was that and, the bridging loan? Yeah. But it was nonetheless, the Prime Minister at the time described it as a flagrant breach of what had been promised, so there's no question that it was a... a, a so, so why now? I mean, there's an old saying, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice... Sorry, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Why listen to exactly the same people making exactly the same promise when they've already broken it? Uh, the Treaty of Rome says that all member states can be called on to help any individual member state that might find itself in severe difficulties. It could be from a natural disaster, for example, or it could be as a result of the migrant crisis. So that could potentially involve the UK bailing out a Eurozone country. Let's be absolutely clear. The UK will not be contributing to a Eurozone bailout. We are not in the Eurozone. And we also have a veto on any increases in the European budget. Ah, but so let's so come these, on to these the guys can, can kind of muddy the water all they like and pick out little things and go, but ah... Because an inch has been given there, a whole mile is going to be given away, and we're going to have to contribute all this money to the Eurozone. It's it won't happen. Now, when there Chuck, was last... It's only when a matter there was of last, time before the crisis. Oh, it's only a matter of it, time. Before it hits France saying, or Italy, you, you know that. You've been saying it's and only we, a matter and when of time. We are, if we are still there, so many issues the idea that we're not going to be dragged into it is a fantasy. Right, well, let's just pick up on the budget. Because you say that the UK, again, can veto any increases in the budget. That's right. Now, that is something called the multi-annual financial framework, or fiscal framework, which comes up every seven years. Years, and that is true. But there are individual negotiations on an annual basis which actually Britain does not have a veto over. That actually it can be passed by qualified majority voting. So in between those two points of seven years, the budget can go up and Britain wouldn't be able to stop it. Well, Britain successfully stopped increases in the budget in the past, and there's no reason why you should sure. do it in the future. Every seven years, but back? not on the annual. Let, let, let's just Can clear I just up go? On well, this well there's an important point that Dan made, but we must think, then go think, back which, to the which, budget. which I think is a fair point, or maybe you made it in relation to well, what happens if there is a complete yeah. catastrophe well, what does happen? in in the eurozone? Now, go back to when uh, Greece was on the precipice of potentially coming out of the euro. There was no question at that time, from my recollection, that we would be actually be contributing into the bailout. But what people were anticipating if Greece came out was that there would be a severe humanitarian situation in Greece, not least because of the economy collapsing more, already more than it has already done so. Now, in that situation, if you had a humanitarian catastrophe, I'm not sure even Dan would be advocating that, that the UK shouldn't play some part. But the idea that we would be paying into a bailout is for the birds. It will not happen. Right. What about on the idea of the budget? Is mm. it true and is it the case that Britain does have a veto every seven years for those budget negotiations, but on the annual mm. negotiations they don't? Mm. And for the first time ever in the 17 years that I've been in the European Parliament, they have postponed the discussion of the mid-term review of this thing until after our referendum. It was due at the beginning of this year and they said, oh, let's not frighten the horses. This, by the way, is something they're doing... In area after area, you know, the, the banning of electrical appliances, the attack on our commercial ports, the budget hike, all of these things are being held back for the event of a Remain vote. And it's very important to understand this. Voting to stay What's in... electrical is not, are they banning? Uh, a whole bunch of the higher, higher power toasters and hair, hair dryers, dryers and all apparently. of these things. Hair uh, dryers and, and toasters. They're banning hair dryers and toasters. The higher, the higher power and, ones, yes. How are people just, using those? Viewers <laughs> watching this use hair dryers and toasters. Yes. And they'll find that quite a lot of the ones that they're currently buying right. are, are now banned. Is that because, because, of, safety? Banned exactly is that because of safety regulation? It's been, this is the thing. It's been postponed. Right. It's been postponed until after our referendum. See, that all 
of these things, which have well, now been have put they in banned the fridge, these things or not? Hang on. It was it was lifted from the agenda at the last minute and deferred until so they after haven't our them. referendum. So you just That's said they're banning all these electrical all appliances, these things and it turns happen. out they haven't banned any of them no, at Chucky, all. you heard what I said. All I of heard these what things you said. Are you said they've been banned, and now you're saying they are. We vote to remain in all of these. The court services directive. Everyone. So you won't be able to use a hairdryer if we stay in the European Union. All of these things have been deferred. Well, in your case, in your case, that might not be such a no. Or in my case, or in your case, bacon and butter. Sorry, Joe, this, is, this, a really, this is a really important right, point. Right, let Dan okay? finish the point. The, the, the Port Services Directive, opposed by every port owner and every trade union in Britain, a real uh, threat to the commercial viability of Liverpool, Glasgow, Bristol, Southampton, Belfast, mm. right? That went through. Every British MEP voted against it. It still got a majority. And then they said, oh, let's just defer the implementation of this until after the summer. There is so much stuff that is being right. held back right. that if we, you think so that if, if this is shut how they... Down. Hang on. Well, Every yeah. single no port owner is against it. Uh, you, you may think it's funny. I'm you not may laughing at it. No, uh, well, You're you, the one making it up as you go along. No, no, no. Me. Every port owner, every trade union, every British MEP, including all of yours, oppose this thing. You're now making light of it and saying, well, it doesn't really matter. You're saying if all our ports vote, are going to be shut down. No, I'm saying they will face a huge commercial disadvantage because of a oh, piece so of they are going to carry on working well, if we were to leave the European Union. Of course they are. Chuck, well, please don't see, try and let's conduct see, the debate at this point. Let's see what happens in a few weeks' time. I'm sure we will see you probably before then. But thank you for coming in.